Okay, so she went so with the I, agent. The agent never listed her house. Nothing ever never, happened. Never, so nothing ever came back with it. And probably because the house is in a certain condition. Yep. The timeline, they don't understand the foreclosure game. And it, she's getting scared and nervous at this point, so. Um, section 8, clients. Uh, do you get like a list of people? My name is Emily, and um, I just recently... Okay. Okay. Um, so think about your workflow. Again, you... I don't know how to do it. I know how to do it, and I'm trying to instruct other people to, to do better in their business, but I also have to do better in my business. All right. Hey, everyone out there in YouTube land and wherever else you're watching this. So um, I'm here with uh, a fellow wholesaler who is very special to me because he helped me actually get my start in wholesaling, Todd Chun. I call him the GOAT in the Metro Detroit area because he is definitely the wholesaling GOAT. So um, with that being said, Todd, how you doing? Um, we're in your new office here. Uh, so I know we're, we're, you're still working on some things, and but you're still doing wholesaling, you're still doing business, still yep. going through that. Um, so if anybody hasn't seen this before, we have had him on the channel through our podcast. Go watch the other video. I will link that video somewhere over here, or I will link it in the description as well. So go ahead and go over there and watch this. But tell us real quick a two-minute how you got started in wholesaling and just a quick background. Okay. Well, thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. So how I got started in wholesaling, actually, I've been wholesaling now um, going on seven years. Okay. okay. About seven and a half years ago, um, I seen a radio commercial, kept hearing a radio commercial, kept hearing a radio. Um, they're coming to Detroit. It's going to teach you how to flip houses and things like that. So it's like a little seminar, big, big outfit. They come, they go state to state. I don't even know if they do it anymore. And so I pay, I went for the free event and then I paid a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks for the weekend event. And during that event, they mentioned the word wholesaling. Never heard of it before. Okay. I was in the mortgage business for many years. I was buying, working for a company. We were buying rentals in the city of Detroit, going to the auctions, all that good stuff. But never heard about wholesaling. And then I heard about it from there, researched it, went to a, found, they told me to go find a meetup, local meetup, went to Renegade Detroit mm -hmm. at the coffee shop. And that's how I figured out what wholesaling was. That's awesome. So, by the way, shout out to Renegades Detroit. They have a podcast as well. Go watch them. But they're awesome as well. I uh, and so when you got that start, I uh, you you knew nothing about wholesaling besides the seminar. Now this is before COVID, before we had all this virtual stuff going on. So, you know, it's a lot easier to start right now. <laughs> you know, um than it was before. But, you know, you have a lot of those years experience and things like that. Now, you were also in the industry before you even knew about wholesaling as well, right? Correct. Okay. So you were doing mortgages? Correct. Awesome. So even having that knowledge in and going in there, that gives you a huge leg up. So um, now coming to today, you moved into this new office. It's a, it's a great office. It's in a nice place here in Milford. But you do a lot of your stuff remotely or virtually, but you still go on appointments, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. So uh, the good thing about your office here is you have a lot of the people you work with close by. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So so tell us a little bit about the people that you work with and and yeah and why why you chose this office space. Well, this office space 
you know, my son works with me. He's on my team. My broker and I, we do all kinds of things together, flip wise, um, and some wholesaling mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And she's right across here and she's local to the area. I'm very local to the area. And I have a dumpster company that's five minutes away. My house is six or seven minutes away. So this is this is a great spot for that. Even though I do a lot of business in Detroit, I'm in the middle. Milford is in the middle of Detroit, in the middle of Genesee County. Okay. Okay. I can get 40 minutes that way, 40 minutes that way, and I, I don't mind driving. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's um, why I chose here. I used to have an office in Detroit, but going from my house to Detroit every day and then and then I got sometimes I got to come home and do something and then I got to go back to Detroit yeah. it's better to start here and um you know I wanted to be more virtual I've learned a ton but I'm a hands-on type of guy got it I, I, I got to go to the houses uh, in a lot of cases but I'm trying to do um I'm probably 50 50 right now 50 virtual 50, 50 okay not virtual yeah, there's just something to say about the the in face in person, you know, face to face with a with a seller, yeah. and you and sometimes then you could just be real with them, you know. Absolutely, I mean they both have their advantages and, and disadvantages, disadvantages yeah. for sure, hundred percent. Uh, especially with virtual, like a lot of virtual wholesalers, and nothing against you virtual wholesalers out there, but you rely they rely on. Uh, the homeowner to send, send them pictures. Yep. You think this homeowner is going to send you bad pictures? Right. You know, uh, I show you all the bad stuff. Like it's it's not. Gonna I happen. would hire one of my field guys. Okay. I would hire someone to go take pictures. Okay. Or real estate agent if it's up north. Um, yeah, the best thing is to hire somebody. Okay. You know, squat up with someone in that area or just pay them whatever fifty bucks. 100 bucks whatever it might be to go take the photos yep. or meet people out there things like that so um yeah like you said five five six seven years ago is a lot different yep um but now there's le you know a lot more competition a lot more people right. out there out of state virtual and they have no idea what the values are you know mm -hmm. you're selling houses in detroit that you know i might sell it for 40 and they're trying to sell it for seven Right. So they'll never sell it in my mind. So exactly makes it more competition, makes it tougher, makes it easier also. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it's funny because I see a lot of virtual wholesalers. They come by. They and I'll use these round numbers for example. I uh, they'll say, "Oh, the ARV after repair value is a hundred grand. Uh, we're looking to get eighty nine. Easy ten or eleven thousand dollars equity right there." you know, closing costs, whatever, any other fees, things like that, and rehab is going to eat up all of that. Yeah, they just don't have that knowledge. Right. That's all. And I don't care what you say. When you, if you, even if you say it's a turnkey rental, there's always going to be some sort of rehab, some sort of integration, some sort of cost in order to get a tenant in there. Ain't that right? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. But once someone moves out, Sometimes you go in a house, the house looks good while they're living there. As soon as they move, it's empty. You'll find some flaws. Exactly. It's yeah. just like when you turn over a tenant, right? Yeah. You know, you're going to be spending some money to, to do some fresh paint, to uh, clean up and yeah. clean up the place or do whatever. You know, you, you get lucky tenants where you don't, but, you know, for the most part, you still got to fresh up. Yep. You know, so um, tell us a little bit about you know, your workflow that you have, um, I know you've been changing it a little bit here and there, you've been testing, um, but it, whatever you want, you feel like you want to share. Yeah, sure. You know? Well, you know what? You could get lost in everything that's out there. Yeah. Right? I, you know, you could meet this guru. I want my business to run like him. Mm -hmm. I want to hire some cold callers and people to call and this and that you and it works for some people and there's other people to say do it this way do it that way mm -hmm. so personally i like it small mm -hmm. um, me my son and that's it i'm telling you and i like the dialer i'm an old school mojo dialer okay put a list in there and make the phone calls send the met send the voicemails 
you know, they made a lot of changes to texting. I was doing text blasting, mm -hmm. um, not a fan, of, and not, not really ever was a fan. I'm more of a fan of referrals and calling and people um, driving for dollars and things of that nature, and you make the phone calls. So okay. that, that's what, that, that's what I, I like to do. Follow up, follow up, follow up. That's the key. 100%. Follow up is the key. That's where you'll make most of your money. You're, how you how many times are you going to get a deal on the first phone call? Not and that's, that's the key. 90% of the deals will be yep. within follow up, right? Yep, yep. And unless, they, unless they're calling you from your website, I yes. don't really do that type of marketing. Um, or if you send them a postcard and they call you, and, and you know. Sometimes you might lock it up right away or at least make an appointment, go to their house and lock it yeah. up. And what he's Either speaking way. of is there's just two types of marketing. Uh, obviously, there's more than two types, but uh, two major types. There's inbound and outbound marketing. Okay. So what he's referring to, what he's doing is outbound marketing, and that's where the follow-up is the key. 90% of your deals will be within follow-up, only 10%, probably even less than 10%. Uh, of those deals will come f come right away, okay? Yeah. So, uh, you know, even if you go on an appointment right away, yeah, the pricing may be different or the timing may be off or whatever. You just can keep following up with them. Yeah. Uh, now, inbound marketing is a completely different uh, schedule, uh, a completely different aspect. And when you bring inbound marketing, they are highly motivated and they're ready to sell at the moment. Okay, so uh, even with inbound marketing, you still have to follow. There's still follow ups, but there's a higher percentage that you'll get a deal right away. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, and you make more money usually on those type of deals. Correct. I, I, I don't know. I guess it just depends on the situation. You may make more money, but it also costs more money to do inbound marketing yeah. than it is outbound marketing. So. If you're just starting out, I would start off with outbound marketing at the moment uh, because you're going to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars probably before you even see a lead uh, coming from inbound marketing. Right. Because you got to do a lot of SEO marketing and, and website and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, I mean, I in seven years, I never had a website. I just got one. You just got one. And I don't even. I don't even know why I got it. it it's like an afterthought I don't, for you, right? Don't even, doesn't, so you, people that just start, they could get lost. So I got to get a website. I got to get a business name or LLC. I got to do this. I got to do that. You really don't. You just got to pick up the phone, make phone calls, yep. um, knock on doors, whatever way you want to do it. My first deal, I did it in my personal name, not my LLC. Don't wait until you get an LLC to start. Here in Michigan, we're still able to do it without a license. We're still able to do wholesaling as of November of 2023. I have to add add that. Yeah. <laughs> we are still able to wholesale without a license, and uh, we don't need to be a realtor. Now, that actually brings me to my next point is, should a wholesaler become a realtor, and are you a realtor? Yeah, I am a realtor okay. since 2012. And I, there's so many advantages. Yeah. And and eventually everyone's gonna need to be licensed, in my in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna make it harder for people to get licensed eventually. Yep. So the only disadvantage that um, I would say there is is that if there's a if someone's selling their house. If someone calls you and they're selling their house with an agent or there's a sign in front, you can't go door knock it. You can't um, really, you know, take the deal or, or mm -hmm. go after that deal. But how many times has that ever happened? Not, not many. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, I got access to the MLS, which I could check out someone's taxes, all kinds of things. What mm -hmm. if it's been listed? What the picture? What it looks like? There's so many things you can find out who who's the actual owner, and and you know so it's in the comp scenario. I mean, come on, right, right. So I am not an agent, and he's been bugging me to get my agent like to get my license for a while. But because I only do this part of time, I have not become one. I will eventually, but in the meantime, 
Uh, because I don't have access to the MLS, I, I use a company called PropStream at the moment. I, that's where I get, gather my lists. I, gather, I, I also gather all comp data, and I gather all the information that I can about the property. By the way, there will be a link in the, strip, in the description uh, if you want to join PropStream. Feel free. It is an affiliate link to help the uh, help the channel, but it is something that I do personally use. So I would never use any, never promote anything that I don't personally use myself. Yeah. So I've used PropStream before. Okay. Um, I think it's a good source for lists for sure. And if you don't have access to MLS, it can help out yeah. better than nothing. You know. So. Yeah. So do you pull lists? And if you do, what what do you specialize in? Yeah. Um, I don't really pull lists like in, I've tried it, but but I, I specialize in pre-foreclosures and foreclosures. Okay. And I pull a pre-foreclosure list. Mm -hmm. That is what I probably specialize in. Okay. Awesome. So being, doing all the pre-foreclosures and, and it's just, those people are more motivated to sell versus say, uh, um, somebody being behind on the taxes, they're like, ah, I, I have the money, but I just haven't done it. You um, know? Well, you could go like this. In a, in a month, there might be a thousand people that are in pre foreclosure mm -hmm. in the state of Michigan. Okay. Out of the thousand, there's probably 10, maybe 15 or 20% of the, 20% of those that are going to actually go to auction. Mm hmm. So the other ones, the eighty percent of them catch it up to date. They file bankruptcy. They do something, or they work out a payment plan with their mortgage company. Right. So you're you're talking to a lot of people that you're that are never going to sell their house. So there's you know, it, it, you know everything has its advantages and disadvantages. Right. So that's you know finding that person. Remember, all we need is one or two people per week. You yeah, know, close. You know, one or two, one or two people that you could you could get a deal, and you're going to close a higher percentage of them. Yep. You know, so in a one man show, I'm not looking to close twenty deals a month. Right. No need to. And you're not here to convince people to sell them your for you to buy them buy their house. Uh, you're just there to help them. Isn't that right? That, that's correct. Yeah. You know. You got problem solved. Help them, help them figure out what's their best. Well, help them figure out what their options are, mm -hmm. and because what you think is the best might not be. So it just depends on their situation. Yeah. Now, that's the th that's the thing is is there's a lot of people out there. Some of them are uh, other realtors and other people. You're stealing equity away from the homeowners, and you're doing this and that and. And what would I know what I would say to rebut that, but what would you say? You're stealing, you know, there's I, I deal with a lot of agents, they bring me those type of deals. Yeah. I mean, if the house is gorgeous, I'm a licensed agent. I mean, I, I got like three or four listed right now mm -hmm. because the option to buy it at a discount wasn't there, so right. And it didn't, and it wasn't their their best option. You right. Know, not saying it wasn't there. It just wasn't their best option. Mm -hmm. Some of these are actually going in pre in foreclosure, and I'm listing them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't even know what my rebuttal is. I don't argue with them. I say, yeah. what, what you know, whatever. You know, it's all about the seller. You know, I had one. It's funny. It's in foreclosure, and she agreed with me. And she signed a contract that was giving her money to move and buying the property. And then she had, and then she ghosted me and an agent texted me and said, I'm listing the house. Um, don't, don't call her, whatever, mm -hmm. really, whatever, you know? Right. So long story short, she just called me and said, I'm ready to move forward with you, you know? Okay, so she went so with the I, agent. The agent never listed their house. Nothing ever never, happened. Never, never, nothing so ever came back with it. And probably because the house is in a certain condition. Yep. The timeline, they don't understand the foreclosure game, mm -hmm. and it, she's getting scared and nervous at this point. So, and that would be my rebuttal. Um, with that is, 
we're not stealing equity. We're giving people options. You know, the thing is, is that if you do go put it up on the market, more than likely you're going to get a lower offer. And uh, the, the other investors, the investors may see it and they may not, you know. Um, but for the most part, the MLS is mainly for people that are looking for a home for themselves, you know. That, that's, that's the way mainly, I would say but the, but, Yeah. You but know? there's deals on there for investors. Yep. Um, you know, also. Yes. Yep. I, investors do scour the MLS and, and they do scour for deals. I, I will give them that. Um, you know, but the majority of it is for, yeah. you know, homeowners. You know, and if you can't pass, my thing is, is if you can't pass an inspection, uh, like a FHA inspection or a homeowner's in, uh, a regular inspection, then more than likely you're, it's better to go with an investor who can actually do the work. Right. You know, so with that, investors need discounts. So, yep. Was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view 